Hi, I'm Brian, and welcome to our session at Google Cloud Next. This session is going to be about achieving high resiliency and availability with Google Cloud infrastructure. I'm joined by my friend and colleague, Chris Schilling. We're both product managers at Google and are excited to talk to you about this session. The session today is going to cover a number of topics. First, we're going to talk about why resiliency and high availability matter in the cloud, a little bit about what Google Cloud provides to customers as a foundation of the platform, some of the things you as a user of Google Cloud need to take into account as you architect your solutions and applications on Google Cloud. And then Chris is going to talk a little bit about business continuity planning, and it's a good idea for all applications and all systems. And then we'll give you some links about how to find more information. With this, I'd like to turn it over to Chris to get into the content. Thanks, Brian. Now let's talk about why resiliency and high availability matter to technologists building in the cloud. Terms like resiliency can be used in a lot of different contexts in IT infrastructure. We hear the term in the context of distributed systems, context of databases, in the context of networking. When we think broadly about what defines resilient infrastructure, I think there are two key components. First off, that infrastructure needs to be able to handle failures without unexpected data loss. If there is a network partition that results in the loss of a node, for example, a resilient distributed database with many nodes should be able to recover without a split brain situation. Similarly, if there is a disk failure in a resilient enterprise storage array, the system should have copies of that data available elsewhere to mitigate against data loss. So that's the first component of resiliency. Failure should not mean data loss. The second component is that resiliency means more than one layer of defense. Just as infrastructure has multiple components, from software-defined storage, to the relational database, to network and access security, the business logic middle tier. So too does resiliency. Resilient infrastructure will have defense baked into those layers, and in certain layers, multiple lines of defense. If resiliency is a fundamentally defensive concept focused on your data, high availability, on the other hand, is about your end user's experience. Highly available applications are still available to the user even when something goes wrong with the infrastructure. That means that your users should be adversely affected when a failure occurs. An application can be resilient without being highly available, or it could be highly available without resiliency. We'd all like to achieve both. And that's why we at Google Cloud view these goals as linked. If your goal is high availability for a global consumer application, you want to ensure that an individual hardware failure in one of your cloud regions would not impact your customer's experience. That almost always means thinking about resiliency because data loss can be harmful to your customers as well. Similarly, if your goal is resiliency, you want to make sure that all your defensive hard work to protect against data loss and to create layers of defense will also have a direct business impact, ideally because your customers never notice any change to their experience, even when things go wrong. So those are our link goals, both resiliency and high availability. When we break down the requirements for those, like the first one on our list is infrastructure durability. It lines up more with the defensive nature of resiliency because here we're talking about providing hardware SLAs. We're talking about making sure our data centers are safe. And we're thinking about how we respond to escalations within our network. A good example of infrastructure durability is our public durability service level objective for persistent disk, our block storage offering. For regional balance PD, for example, we share that we have better than 99.9999% durability, six nines. Next up is application availability. That's something that veers toward the high availability goal because we're thinking about how to keep a database up and running for your transactional applications or how to move traffic to the right node or even region within a distributed application. A great product level example is our high availability configuration for Cloud SQL, our managed database offering. It lets you set up an architecture designed to limit user impact the primary database instant fails. Last but not least is business continuity. We view this as a core component for both link goals, because this is all about planning, checking, and double checking that you have an infrastructure safety net. That means taking backups to ensure resiliency. And it also means testing your active active disaster recovery architecture to ensure high availability for your application. One product that we have in this space is our multi-region storage, 
which stores your backup data across multiple Google Cloud regions in a given continent. The result is that it's easy to restore in multiple Google Cloud regions on that continent depending on what your business continuity plan calls for. One other takeaway from all this is Google Cloud delivers infrastructure durability to all our infrastructure as a service customers. This is a default setting for us, not an upcharge or an option. If you want to build a resilient, highly available application, we want to take care of the first step. The next two steps, ensuring application availability and creating a business continuity plan of attack, those are equally important. For them, we offer our customers tools and services that they can adopt to meet specific goals. We recognize that some tier one customer facing transactional applications will have requirements above and beyond an internal sandbox application with a few years of no, few users and no customer data, for example. So let's talk about durability first. And this is a great topic to kick us off because Google Cloud really shines here. All our customers get the benefit of infrastructure durability that underpins some of the world's favorite applications like YouTube. And that starts with storage for all types of applications. Our block offering, persistent disk, our first party file offering, file store, and our object storage offering, cloud storage, all count some of the world's largest enterprises as customers and users. Regardless of whether you're a startup or a Fortune 100 company, you can find the same public durability information on our persistent disk offerings on our website. All of that information is available publicly. We recently published a blog post to help customers further understand how we approach disk durability and what we do to keep your infrastructure safe. Similarly, as we're a service provider for the infrastructure, we have operational safeguards in place to make sure you have a trusted platform to build on. That means having encryption by default, for example, so you don't have to worry about accidental leakage of un unencrypted data. It also means having site reliability engineering or SRE coverage across our growing, growing global footprint and across all of our services. Many of Google's SREs have contributed to the open literature and public practices that help make all of us in product engineering better at our operations. You get the benefit of all this knowledge and the benefit of having these SREs available to address service level issues when you build on Google Cloud. I'll hand the rest of the slide over to Brian. Thanks, Chris. The other part of infrastructure durability really comes from our global data centers and our network. Our global data centers are significant. We have 27 regions and over 82 zones built out in many continents in the world, and they offer a tremendous amount of on-demand capacity and many layers of physical security in the data centers themselves. Of course, we've layered on top of this infrastructure uh, sophisticated hardware monitoring, and all of these are used to basically offer the many managed services that are part of the Google Cloud network. And of course, the network, I always like to tell people the Google Cloud network scales and has high availability because Google itself has scale and high availability. Almost everybody in the world has some uh, appreciation for the scale of Google's consumer services. You probably use some of these, you know, almost every day. These same pieces of infrastructure and the same network is used to provide the capabilities that we offer in the Google Cloud Platform. And of course, we have significant investments in undersea cabling, uh, edge pops or points of presence where we're essentially appearing into the internet and the network. And of course, we have thousands of edge caches to make the performance of Google services and of course the performance of many Google Cloud services incredibly performant and available. The other thing I like to use it as an example is our networking prowess and the software defined networking we have in Google Cloud makes it really easy for you to build on top of this global infrastructure. A specific example of that is the global VPCs or virtual private clouds that you can build. They're network constructs that are very easy to set up and essentially span Google Cloud regions. So you can create one virtual network that spans region, makes it very easy for you to build global applications that take advantage of this infrastructure that we've built. Now let's talk about some of the things that it's important for you to think about architecting as you build applications and services on Google Cloud. And it's important to think about applications in terms of different types of applications. I often like to think about, particularly in a short session like this, different types of applications that would be like web servers and application servers, often being stateless apps, and a second set of applications being databases and very durable apps, places where all of your data lives. And we're gonna spend a little time to talk about each of those individually. 
So if we look at the left part of the slide here, the first thing I want to talk about is load balancing. So the first two, load balancing and the GCE or Google Compute Engine auto healing are really things to first think about when you're thinking about application servers and web servers, that first category of applications I mentioned. Load balancers essentially redirect traffic away from unresponsive servers, unresponsive web servers or application server. They may be too busy, might be a software defect. There could be a lot of reasons why a node becomes unresponsive. Load balancing essentially will redirect traffic away from these unresponsive nodes so your customers and users of the applications get a great experience. Uh, there are different options on how you deploy a load balancer. You can deploy it to essentially give uh, capabilities to span zones and regions uh, for more local uh, load balancing. There's also options to essentially do global load balancing. So all of your consumers and users can come into one single point and the application may actually be spread across regions. So even full region outages will be um, hidden from your customers. They'll be redirected to surviving you know, healthy nodes. The second layer of defense, as Chris mentioned, it's good to have multiple layers of defense for applications and web servers is to think about auto healing. So in Google Compute Engine, this is our main offering that essentially offers VMs. Many, many applications run in these VMs. And there's a construct that we've developed called managed instance groups. It's essentially a set of VMs that form an application tier in your environment. They can essentially provide a second layer of protection and availability and essentially, they will automatically restart unresponsive nodes. So a node may be too busy. It may get somehow locked in some state that it can't recover from. The load balancer will shift traffic away from it. And then the GC auto healing will come in to essentially restart those nodes. So again, further rehealing the system. An important thing to think about as you start to build these layers of defense is how they work together. And an example is you essentially want the load balancer to redirect traffic away from an unresponsive node before it gets restarted. So as a perfect example, you want the health checks that are in your load balancer to be more frequent and aggressive and reshift traffic away from unresponsive nodes. And then the managed instance group auto healing feature to kick in also has health checks to work slightly slower to actually go in and restart nodes. That made the system is in some senses self healing or auto healing. The second thing I want to talk about is more on the stateful application tier, which is why I've talked about Cloud SQL and Spanner. So Chris mentioned Cloud SQL earlier. You could, of course, run a database inside of one of our VMs. Many customers choose to do that. But it's also great to think about managed database offerings to reduce some of the toil about setting up and running a database server. And that's really where Cloud SQL comes in. It's a managed database service we have. It supports a lot of common databases, MySQL, you know, PostgreSQL, SQL Server. Um, and it has a number of interesting capabilities that really add value in the forms of durability and resilience and high availability. One is using snapshot-based backups. Um, you can automate it, so it takes regular backups. Let's say every four hours, you have good uh, protection points. But you can also use it in on-demand snapshots if you're going to do a maintenance task on your database. You know, add tables, change the schema, etc. You could create a snapshot to create an easy recovery point. Uh, the database, the managed database service also has a built-in uh, capability to offer you point-in-time recovery for your databases. So you have snapshots, and then you can essentially move the database to a particular point in time based on the logs that are in the database. So it's a combination of the managed database service working in conjunction with snapshots to offer you a capability to really be specific at exactly the point where the database is consistent and you want to restart the application. Um, it's also great to think about the high availability capabilities in, SQL's, in, a, in the Cloud SQL offering because it offers failover replicas. These are essentially shadow databases that can be set up. They're options inside the service that can essentially uh, run in multiple zones to protect you from a zone outage. Uh, these zonal things can use the regional PD offering, the regional persistent disk offering that Chris mentioned. So we're synchronously replicating uh, the data for the database underneath the covers. Um, and then you essentially have a... Uh, a, a Cloud SQL instance that's ready to go in the event of a zonal outage. There's also a capability in Cloud SQL to essentially do uh, cross-region protection. This is, of course, an asynchronous capability, uh, but it can also protect you against full regional outages. So again, there's a lot of power and flexibility in terms of the offering that Cloud SQL has in terms of building in resilience and high availability. The last thing I wanted to think about or talk to you about in the database tier is our Spanner offering, you know, Cloud Spanner. This is a, a really powerful capability. Uh, it's highly differentiated. 
it really comes from technology that Google built to you know, scale to the billions of users we have on our consumer applications. Uh, it's a fully managed database service, so it's very easy to use, but it's basically a, a single cross-regional database. Uh, it's active, active, and read-write in many regions all at the same time. And that's really what makes it unique. So it preserves the value of standard SQL because that's such a common uh, application programming language. But it provides you essentially, in some senses, a uh, you, know, you can think about a cross-regional database as a continent-sized database for you to operate on. So it really allows you to simplify how you think about building these systems. And it comes with a 5.9 availability SLA. So it's really a powerful capability. Uh, to have in the arsenal as you think about how you build applications on Google Cloud. Now I'd like to turn it over to Chris for the next part. Much appreciated, Brian. So let's switch back to business continuity, the insurance policy, the safety net that we all know we need. This continuity is a pretty expansive term. It can mean a lot of things, from how a cloud architect plans for disaster, production instance loss, to, uh, to how a storage administrator tests backups. You'll notice I mentioned planning and testing right off the bat, and that's, we have a number of features and services built for business continuity purposes, features like being able to export a copy of your database to our object storage for long-term archival, for example. But business continuity is about being absolutely certain that the data will be available when the auditor calls. That's why the human element of planning and testing is so important here. As the saying goes, an amateur takes a backup professional tests that can be restored. So when we dial into a couple of services, two interesting ones that I find differentiated are our multi-region storage and our orchestrated backup. They play different roles in our business continuity package. Multi-region storage can mean keeping data in our object storage. We'll keep two copies of the data in two different regions on a continent, available in case of regional failure or disaster. This also underpins some of our other offerings makes it possible, for example, for our customers to restore snapshots stored in North America to different North American regions without having to create a handful of copies across the continent and wait for them to be replicated one after another. And on the orchestrated backup side, we recently acquired Actifio, a proven backup vendor that sells Actifio Go, a backup as a service offering built on Google Cloud. Actifio Go can protect Google Compute Engine VMs if you're building in the cloud, or if you're lifting and shifting relational databases into Google, uh, Google VMs and you need application-consistent agent-based backups, similar to what you have on-prem, Actifio Go can deliver the same functionality to you, allowing you to back up your newly migrated database workloads as frequently as every 15 minutes. Best of all, that data can be stored in multiple Google Cloud object storage buckets in different regions and classes and it can be restored directly from object storage, which means lower long-term storage costs for customers with severe data retention requirements and easier discussions with your internal compliance counterparts when you test that a backup is available, for example, without the need to complicate restores or move data around to different block storage options. These are just two of our features that we've created to make business continuity easier for you to plan and to test so that you and your team can achieve those goals around resiliency and high availability. If you'd like to learn more, we've included a couple of links to some interesting content on disaster recovery, high availability, and resilience. In the bottom right, there's a link to achieving resiliency and high availability in Cloud SQL. It's a video from last year's Next, and it covers a lot of the topics we've discussed here as they apply to that managed database service. Just above that, we have a DR planning guide for GCE. For those of you who are running stateful workloads in Google Cloud VMs, we think you'll find that useful to help you plan for your DR requirements. Over on the left, we have a few sessions at Next that we think you'll find relevant. We've included their titles and the shorthand name, name with numbers, so you can find those in the catalog. I want to thank Brian for co-presenting with me, and I want to thank all of you for attending our session.